everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jackie and I'm a self-taught software engineer based in London and in this video we're going to dive deep into how I transitioned from mechanical to software engineering. So let's dive into it. I have my laptop here with my notes. When I was a teenager, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I grew up, uh, but I always really liked maths and science in general. So when the time came, uh, I was 18 and I decided to study mechanical engineering at university because it was one of the most broad engineering degrees that you could take because it has uh, several different technical applications and in different industries that you can work in. I did an integrated master's in mechanical engineering at the University of Aveiro in Portugal. This degree consists of a three-year bachelor's and a two-year master's, and you do it consecutively at the same university. While I was studying, uh, the topics that I enjoyed the most were fluid dynamics and solid mechanics and thermal engineering, so basically like all the subjects which involved some type of numerical simulation. I enjoyed these fields because they were quite challenging and they were a bit more mathematical than certain other fields in mechanical engineering. And I found it quite interesting how we could model and predict deformation and state changes and all of that. So the first time that I thought about learning how to code was at uni when I started my master's and I started doing CFD. So CFD stands for Computational Fluid Dynamics uh, and it's basically analyzing and simulating fluid behavior uh, using computational models. So often people who work with CFD in academia, they end up writing or contributing to open source code uh, for stuff like solvers and post-processors for um, these type of simulations. So at the time I remember thinking, oh, like this would be kind of cool if I were able to like write my own simulation code. And this is where I first had this idea of teaching myself how to code. However, I felt like I still needed to learn so much about the physics aspect of CFD, so I kind of park the idea for a bit because I knew it would be a long shot. And because I enjoyed this area so much of like fluid dynamics and simulation, I ended up doing my master thesis in aeroacoustics. Aeroacoustics is basically studying and simulating noise that's generated aerodynamically. And my thesis in particular was about fan blade designs and analyzing and studying the aeroacoustics of certain fan blades. I even tried submitting a pattern during my thesis because I was coming up with new designs for the fan blades. I even put golf ball dimples on one of them so that it would dissipate the turbulent energy that was passing through the blades uh, and this way reducing um, the noise that it would generate. But it didn't work out because someone else had already come up with that. But anyway, so I started this thesis in February 2018. And since this was the last year um, at university, I was already applying to jobs and looking for something once I would graduate in the summer. At the time, I really wanted to be a development engineer for Formula One team, so for the cars, um, because there's a lot of interesting stuff that you can do with CFD and with simulation in general. But then I actually got an interview for Rolls-Royce uh, not the car manufacturer, but the aircraft engine manufacturer. And I had applied to their grad scheme in Germany, but I thought it was such a long shot because like, I'm not an aerospace engineer. I did mechanical at university, so I wasn't expecting to actually get an interview, but I did. So I got this interview invite. I studied so hard for it. I really prepared well for the assessment center. And then in the end, I got an offer to join their aerospace engineering graduate program in Germany. So yeah, in the end, I graduated in July 2018 and in September, I moved to Germany for my new job. It was really exciting because Rolls-Royce is like the equivalent of a fan company when it comes to aerospace companies. And it was a long shot for me. I was over the moon that I got this position and I was really, really excited to work in aerodynamics at Rolls-Royce. So then at Rolls-Royce, I worked in four different departments uh, during this grad scheme and two of them, we were able to pick them. And it was around March 2019 that I started learning how to code at home. So Rolls-Royce Germany, uh, at least during my time, would send their graduate engineers for a placement abroad uh, in the UK. So I was staying in Derby and working there for a few months on a project. If you're British, you know that Derby is not the most exciting city, so I was extremely bored there. Um, there wasn't much to do. And I had a friend of mine who was actually working at a fan company in London as well. Um, and at the time he suggested like, oh, since you have so much free time, why don't you start learning how to code? 
I followed his advice and I started learning some JavaScript and I was doing a few coding challenges online. It was fun. I, I quite enjoyed the challenges. I felt like it was a bit like doing Sudoku or like any of these um, brain teasers. Uh, it was exciting and challenging in a way. So during uni, I had some MATLAB and I had a bit of C in one of my classes, but it really wasn't proper programming. It was just like very high level stuff. I did learn a little bit about networks and stuff like the binary system because I had automation and uh, a bit of an IoT class where we would play around with like some Raspberry Pi or something, but it didn't go beyond that. And I really wouldn't say that I properly learned how to code uh, while at university. But I did know, for example, what, what was a for loop or an if statement. So this was 2019 and software engineering was already like a very popular career choice. So I, I knew that the job prospect would be pretty good and I knew that the salaries were great as well. So I decided that, you know what, it's going to be a good investment. Even if I remain working in aerospace, there's always so much that you can do and automate if you learn how to code. Um, I really thought that I couldn't do anything wrong by acquiring these skills. So I did some research on programming courses and ended up buying a Code Academy subscription. And I did their full stack web development career path, which is like a super long course um, that dives deep into a lot of different aspects of web development. So I learned like Node.js, uh, React, JavaScript, SQL, uh, Express, Git, how to write unit tests, that type of stuff. And eventually my project in the UK finished and I moved back to Germany to continue working at Rolls-Royce and I continued doing the courses at home in my free time. Eventually I joined an aerodynamics department for one of my placements. So I was writing my own data post-processing scripts to analyze the results of my simulations. And I was doing this in Python, which I was just learning on the job. And then in parallel to this, I was also uh, writing some bash scripts to automate some processes and kind of to um, build a simulation workflow that would like automatically send jobs to the cluster and retrieve them and stuff like that. I really, really enjoyed working um, in this area because I had kind of the best of both worlds. I was doing my aerodynamic stuff, which I really enjoy, like the physics and the aircraft and like the, the analysis and the simulation, all of that. And then I also had the coding part, which was quite challenging. Um, so once this placement ended, I was really torn between which area to work in. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do simulation work or if I wanted to go more towards the software side. So as my last placement, I decided to pick a data science team at Rolls-Royce uh, so that I could see what it would be like to work in such a team. So in this placement, I got to do a bit of web development. I got to do some machine learning in this team as well, but it was like super, super basic, just like importing the libraries from scikit-learn and then applying it to the data. Uh, but I did learn a bit about decision trees and I guess how to cluster the data and stuff like that. So it was kind of cool. This placement, I wrote a lot of code to like analyze data and gather information from the data that we were looking at. So it was quite interesting. I really enjoyed it. And all the data that I was analyzing in the end was like aircraft data, which is quite exciting. Uh, and we were trying to find insights into um, like service data from the aircrafts. So at the end of my grad scheme, I was a bit at this turning point where I could pick either software development or aerodynamics. And in the end, I decided to go for software development mostly because I really liked the problem solving aspect of programming and and I guess kind of this challenge of always having to learn something new and figure things out. Um, that's one of the things that most attracted me to it. Like it, it never really gets boring when you're doing software development. Whereas in aerodynamics, it's obviously a very uh, exciting field as well. But I just felt like it was more about following processes that were already tested and established rather than going out on your own and like trying to create your own methods and your own scripts and stuff like that. So I think what I did in my placement was a bit of an exception. Um, I got to do all of these scripts and like analyze the data in different ways because I was working on a research project. Um, it wasn't really like a company project or like something that, you know, had a deadline and that had to be delivered fast or that would be included to any engine certification. Because I think if that's the case, then it looks a bit different. You obviously need to follow protocols. It's a very big responsibility to um, 
run this simulation. So you really need to stick to the rules and make it such that, you know, you can draw the conclusions from the simulations that you need to. So there isn't that much room to like innovate or do things differently in there, which makes sense uh, because obviously it's a big responsibility and it's an engine and obviously it needs to be certified and it needs to be safe and all of that. So that's why I decided to go for software development. And then in the end, after the grad scheme, I applied internally to a developer role and I got it. So I joined a new team and for the next year or so, I worked on an internal tool for forecasts for aircraft engine maintenance. But all this time, while I was uh, working my 9 to 5 and also learning programming and like lots of interesting stuff on my 9 to 5, I was still learning programming at home and doing my Code Academy courses. So I would like to take a moment to thank Skillshare for sponsoring a portion of this video. Skillshare is an online learning community which I started using recently to kind of explore a bit more of my creative side and to improve my creative side projects such as YouTube. I decided to partner with them because they did a great job with their platform and they have a wide range of different classes that we can take to develop different types of skills. Skillshare themselves also partnered with self-made, highly skilled business owners in different fields, so in the end we're kind of learning from their own experiences. So for example, I'm now doing a YouTube class called YouTube Success Script Shoot and Edit with MQBHD, who's obviously a YouTube legend, and I feel like I'm gathering quite a lot of useful insights from it. The classes are also usually very concise and to the point, so it doesn't take a long time to go through them, and they have subtitles in multiple languages. So overall, there are so many different classes on content creation, web development, UI, UX design, and also a lot about entrepreneurship and how to start an online business, for example, with Shopify or Etsy. So if you would like to try it out for free, you can use my link. And the first 1000 people to join will get one month of free access to Skillshare. So you can try all the classes that you like. And as always, I really appreciate your support and I really hope that you enjoy the classes if you decide to join. While I was learning, I also built like a few very small projects. And eventually this friend of mine had this idea to build an automated crypto trading journal. And he invited me to contribute to it. Obviously I said yes, because it was a huge learning opportunity for me. So I joined him and another friend of ours and we started building EdSheet. I'm so sorry, actually my camera just died and I had to charge it for about an hour and a half, but I'm back. And yeah, sorry if it looks a bit different, but let's get back into the video. So at this point I had some programming experience, but it was mostly with like systems that would run locally or that would run on a single server, whereas EdSheet was a system that turned out to be much bigger and it was available worldwide and it actually had to scale and serve customers and be available um, all the time. So obviously what I learned by building EdSheet is that there's quite a big difference between building a scalable distributed system compared to something that we just run on a single machine. So yeah, I learned uh, a bit about system design, about NoSQL databases, uh, the cloud, so EdSheet is built on AWS. Uh, I learned about API design and microservices, basically. And eventually I started feeling like I was kind of stagnating a bit at my job. So I wasn't learning anything new. I was mostly just like doing things that I already knew how to do, which I guess is normal. And I was still learning a lot at home because I continued programming at home, whether it was for EdSheet or like doing online courses. But eventually I decided that I was ready for a new challenge. Uh, so I made it a new year's resolution to uh, study and prepare for technical interviews and then try to get a job as a software engineer at a tech company. I still remember it so clearly. Uh, I was writing out my new year's resolutions and I put it on there that I wanted to kind of break into tech. So for about four months from January until April, I was on the lead code grind. I was studying data structures and algorithms. That's something that I didn't know before. So I didn't know what a linked list was or anything like that, or what a graph was or a DFS. Like that's not the sort of thing that you learn when you do online courses or when you do some web development. So I was studying data structures and algorithms. I was also diving a bit deeper into system design. I did 130 lead code problems, mostly medium and easy. And then I applied to 30 companies. I did six interviews. From those six interviews, I got three on sites. And then at the end of April, I had two offers, one from Amazon and another one from Kazoo, which is a UK startup. 
I ended up not going to the last on-site interview because I already had two offers and I wasn't that interested in the third company. So even if they made me an offer, I knew I would go for one of the other two. So in the end, I decided to go for Amazon because I wanted to experience what it's like working at a big tech company or like a fan company. And also given that I don't have a computer science degree, uh, I was thinking long term and I knew that on paper Amazon gave me more credibility as a software engineer than a startup would. Obviously there's pros and cons between working at a startup, working in big tech, uh, but our careers are usually, you know, quite long or even if you just work for 10 years in, in the software industry, I think that's enough time to experience different companies. So I decided to go for big tech now, but we never know in the future I might go for a smaller company. So yep, I guess that's my story. That's how I went from mechanical engineering to software development. I hope this was useful or motivating to you. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to reply to them. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.